It's so good to be back with you. My name is Allison Winnie. Uh, I always like to imagine there might be kids out there I haven't met in person yet. Uh, so I always wanna make sure we all remember to introduce ourselves because we might have new people joining us. So uh, I have the exciting job of getting to do two things today, both uh, the time with children uh, and also getting to uh, talk a little bit about uh, our pledge campaign and everything that we're doing to try to raise enough money for the church. So I'm gonna kind of combine them together. So the first thing I wanted to do was uh, tell a story that a lot of people uh, in the congregation know, but might be new to other people. Uh, and I think we always have to remember that. Uh, we, have, we, we have new people with us possibly. And so I grew up in a church, uh, like a lot of, especially the grownups in our church did, where when you got to get a box of envelopes when it was time to pledge for church. And uh, you, you got to have your name on them and you told the church how much money you would give for the coming year. And in my church, you could do that as soon as you were old enough to hold the box. Uh, so I think I had my first box of envelopes when I was like maybe four. Um, now, part of that is because if you had asked me when I was little what I wanted to be when I grew up, you know, people ask you that question a lot when you're a small person. I would say I want to be a grown up. And they would say, but what do you want to do? And I would say, be grown up. That's all I wanted was to know how to be a grown up. Uh, and so for me, getting those uh, box of envelopes, I saw all the grown ups had them. They were really important to me. And so many years ago, when I started doing some of these things with church, I realized that in our congregation, I wanted to make boxes of envelopes with our kids as well. And so I've been, I'm not sure how long we've been doing it, at least five or more years, where together we would make boxes like this. I don't know if one can see it, but mine says, Allison's Sojourner's Pledge. Uh, and we would go downstairs uh, during November one Sunday and we would make envelopes and I was looking at my envelopes today because we're not making envelopes this year, but I think we're going to make envelopes next year. I'm really hopeful about that. But I was looking at my envelopes and it was kind of hard to see. I don't know if you all can see that, but it says March 2020 on my envelopes. And I thought, so I was getting all excited about doing this. And then I was like, oh, yeah, yet another reminder that I haven't been to church for all these months. Right. And. And so then that led me to feel sad. Do you all know about that? Where you're like, I'm happy, we can do this. I'm sad, it's never going to be over. You know that feeling of COVID that it goes up and down all the time. So anyway, I just wanted to say that I know we're going to make envelopes again. And so all the kids out there who I know have their boxes, maybe you can put special treasures in them for the next year. That's what I'm gonna do. Things that I collect out in nature, I'm gonna put in the box. Um, for other kids who are like, what's this box about? Uh, I am, we will make boxes together again one day. And so that's a promise I make to you. But the most important thing about the boxes and the envelopes is, is not so much, you know, making, I, I mean, it's fun to make arts and crafts and uh, Maddie and Harper and a whole bunch of other kids would help me downstairs. But what's really exciting about the box is it says, I'm going to try. I'm gonna really try to push myself to help pay for church. Um, because while it's incredibly important, all of us who do special service, like I've been excited this year to get to do more of these times with you and to do our first ever youth group uh, with the kids who are sixth through 12th grade. And that's been a special kind of service for me. And that service matters enormously. It is also really important to remember that it takes money. It just takes money to make the church happen, even when the church is not physically together. And that might be the hardest of all because we're making, we're, we're trying to raise money for something that we miss um, and something that we appreciate that's happening now. So as I was thinking about like, I, I don't know if everybody's read um, the letter uh, from um, from Rory and Paula, but it's, it's really important. And so I had like gotten it out and to reread it because I've been praying all month 
um, about what Rory and Paula have asked me to do. And kids, this is the time where if we were sitting up at the front of the church, I would remind you that today your job is to talk with your parents, right? And say to them, you better read me that letter, mom and dad, so I can know what this is all about. And then you might want to pray with your parents and everybody think about it because part of the thing, it's been so hard with the money stuff. If we can, we need to try to increase our pledges, our challenge by 10%, which whew, that's a big, big job for a lot of us to try to step into, especially some of us who, who've lost our jobs or aren't sure what the future holds. And you know, I have my own company, so I've been feeling really stressful about like, should I step into it? Should I do even more to try? Or is that not responsible? Should I, should I hold back? Because I really love pledging, so sometimes I can overdo it a little bit. Um, and so that's the conversation I'm having with God all month. And I haven't decided yet. I'm still thinking hard about it. But I'm going to decide next Sunday because I love Pledge Sunday, uh, the Sunday when we get to choose. But as I was thinking about it and, and sort of figuring out how to challenge myself, I thought, you know what? I think I got to try to do a little more, even though my heart feels a little racy when I think about it. And that is where I will close today. So I know at least some of you out there love the Mandalorian as much as I do. Um, now others are like, wait, what's the Mandalorian? And I don't even know if you can see it. I wore my shirt today. That it's not, it's hard to see, but that's, some people call that baby Yoda. Other people call it the child. This is a Star Wars story that's in Disney, uh, on the Disney channel. But I'm going to pull up this picture so everyone can see it together. Um, here we go. And it's all about, yeah, so there you have it. That's the Mandalorian. And the Mandalorian never takes off his helmet. And his main job so far, we really don't know what's happening in this television show, if you've never watched it. It's a little confusing for people. But you'll see that right here, he's holding what some, who some people call Baby Yoda, because it looks like a little tiny Yoda from Star Wars, uh, or the child. And basically what the Mandalorian is doing all the time is taking care of the child. Just really certain that his one number one job is to take care of the child. And he, he doesn't know why. We don't know why. We don't know what's happening next. We don't know what will happen. Uh, I don't want to spoil it for those of you who haven't seen this week's, but it's pretty exciting where he's taking the child next. I'll just leave it at that. But what we know is the Mandalorian thinks his A number one job is to take care of the child. And so what I've been thinking about this month and what I wanted to share with grownups and kids alike, I think it's always kind of funny that all I wanted to be when I was a kid was a grownup. And now that I'm a grownup, I act more like a kid. Um, so I think that's kind of interesting about a lot of grownups out there know what I'm talking about. Um, but what I realized now that I'm, I had a birthday last week, by the way, now that I'm 48, which I think it's such a cool age because that's you're really a grown up at 48. No one's going to question anymore whether you're a grown up. But I think I have the best, best of both worlds. I get to be a grown up and a kid every day. And so this grown up kid, as I'm wrapping it all together, challenging you to think about 10% more, promising you that we're gonna get together and make envelope boxes again. What I want us to remember is we all got to be like the Mandalorian and the church is like baby Yoda. And we just got to put baby Yoda in our arms and we got to carry baby Yoda, the church, to wherever it needs to go. And that's not just getting through COVID, that's getting through everything Pastor Morgan is helping us with, with our interim. That's getting us all the way to our next pastor. The church is baby Yoda. All of us are the Mandalorian, and we have to put our arms around the church and carry it where it needs to go next. And so on that note, thank you so much for letting me do both time with the kids and a stewardship moment, because that's my idea of fun. I don't know if anybody else had a good time, but as per usual, I had a good time. So just know I'm out there loving you, thinking about you, hoping there's somebody new that doesn't know about the boxes and might want to call me and talk about it. And on that note, thank you, Pastor Morgan, for letting me be a part of worship today. Amen.